Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what was happening on the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, just before we get into all the action, there's quite a few things to talk about. Uh, mostly Real Madrid, more or less champions, as are Porto, to be honest, after uh, this weekend's results. Uh, it was really in the sense that uh, this past weekend was a whole lot more to talk about than the one that previously, but we will cover the results in there as well, because a few interesting things happened there too. But before we go into it, I also want to say the um, review for Serie A. I'm actually waiting for the Coppa Italia semifinals to be played to get like kind of, a, a, again, a little bit of a more whole picture. And uh, I will do similarly for the Premier League because I think there's also um, quite some interesting makeup games that will round it all out. In any case, uh, as I said, Real Madrid as good as champions and Barcelona taking a easterly nose dive par excellence. Uh, it's something I did not expect to happen. I did not expect that Real Madrid, and it's uh, actually at halftime at the game in Sevilla, it really low looked like that uh, we may potentially get a teeny tiny title challenge because there were only a few. If results would have gone the other way, there would have it would have been much much tighter and then you know a makeup game in hand and suddenly could have closed the gap to three points at the moment it's at 15 with a makeup game though in hand with only five respective six uh games to go that seems decisive that uh six uh, and seven games i should uh, correctly say uh to go that seems rather decisive and i think anyone not expecting real madrid to win the title at the moment is either a great visionary predicting the greatest collapse we've ever seen in spanish league history or is completely delusional <laughs> in many 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 ways and in portugal we have a very similar situation where um yeah also uh porto they already were in a really good, good, good position, but with the Derby de Lisboa now going um, uh, Benfica's way, Port and Porto winning uh, big, it's also more or less decided what's going there. And as usual, we will start in Portugal, um, where you know the this is the round from the previous weekend, so early April. Uh, we had all the big ones, Benfica 3-1 by Belenenge, uh, Sporting winning 3-1 at Tondela, and then um, Porto getting a 1-0 win over Vitória Guimarães. Uh, I think the most notable event from that uh, game was that uh, Tour 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 game, a spectator walks on the pitch and starts kicking. I mean, it was not violent, like, but he walks up to them very, very slowly and kicks the uh, Guimarães players. Seemingly not very happy with what was happening. And Braga, uh, you know, just having beaten Rangers, uh, also won at Vizela. However, that uh, kind of fell the way, sir, because we know Braga is out of the Europa League. And yeah, if Braga would have made it, I would already be working on a Braga jersey. Jer jer That's maybe something for the new season to uh, get a nice, uh, you know. Braga seems to be the obvious next team, although Vitória de Guimarães and Boavista are probably more... Uh, Iconic jerseys uh, from my point of view. And I always liked Tondela, but as we'll see, Tondela will go down relatively soon. But you know, the big results uh, on the past weekend were, of course, the Porto completely annihilated Portimonense uh, 7 0, putting a lot of pressure on Sporting to kind of keep, 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 keep up. And they fail on the Benfica Catenaccio that we already saw at Ajax, where uh, Benfica score a uh, goal through Darwin early and then very late, late uh, and late on. Uh, in the second half to make it 2-0 uh, knocking Sporting out of the title race now. I think it's uh, re relatively safe safe to say. And Sturil uh, on playing a 0-0 nil -nil against Braga. Braga, after you know, having overtime with nine men, blah, 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 didn't look good. So um, we have four rounds to go and Porto have a nine-point lead. Could already be next round. It is all on the cusp of uh, being decided. Um Whereas a Sporting also, I mean, it's not only a six-point gap to Benfica, but even that six-point gap seems to be rather, rather safe. And for the remaining spots, I mean, there is also the medal of the cup final, but that will go to Porto. So, you know, uh, everything will probably shift down um, in a way. So, uh, but at the moment, Braga, Gil Vicente and even Vitorek de Guimarães 
are uh, very much looking um, going uh, into the European spot um, as the next round. The, uh, Porto does not have an easy game with uh, an away game to Braga, which is of course a derby and Sporting have to play the classic against Boavista, but Boavista is nowhere at the moment. Uh, Benfica against uh, Family Car. I mean, it seems like a round that could be interesting, but you know, as I said, everything is decided if Porto wins the derby, uh, the, the kind of derby against Braga then I think everything's uh, settled. But before that, we also have the small matter of a cup semifinal return legs. Well, it pretty much goes Tondela against uh, Porto because Porto has already won away from home against Sporting. And Tondela has a commanding 3-0 lead over Mafra. So it will be Porto against Tondela most likely in the cup final. And I don't see anyone but Porto winning that one. Would be nice for Tondela to win that one. You know, I find some liking because just geographically Tondela, there is the southern cluster in Portugal, there's the northern cluster and Tondela is right in the middle. So that's why I, oh, I, I find this charming. Let's put it that way. Moving over to Spain. Let's go to the previous round where uh, Sevilla in a really, really exciting uh, Friday night like won it 4-2 over Granada. A Granada team that has been definitely on the skids and is uh, relegation threatened at, at, at the moment. But uh, Sevilla also shaky. So that 4-2 win was actually a little bit of a foreboding in the sense that Sevilla is not in great form anymore. Yes, you power through and you get the win, but it uh, doesn't look, look good. And Sevilla is at the moment even looking to hold on to the Champions League spots. Uh, whereas Betis beat Cadiz, um, uh, Cadiz, Cadiz, this, uh, 2-1, to, to a big win for Mallorca over Atletico Madrid, who just really fall back, but I think it was the tough game against Manchester City, this was in between the two Manchester City games, uh, same thing goes for Villarreal against Atletico Club, a 1-1, and Real Madrid, a very unexciting 2-0 over Getafe. Uh, uh, important win also for Espanyol, the 1-0 over Celta, basically solidifying them in the league. I, I would say Real Sociedad away uh, to Elche. Uh, it's actually Real Sociedad, we have, always, we have almost forgotten about them. You know, last season they were the, the good story, the exciting team. And now uh, they started well, but then kind of a falling away. But they're coming slowly back into it, as, as we'll see. Barcelona with a really exciting win over Levante. A Levante team, they had three penalties only, but one was missed. But um, very late on, they get the win uh, through a Luc de Jong goal. But uh, also, Levante, a team that maybe gets rolling way too late. I always have said, Levante is not that bad. It's just that they didn't get the wins because they have many, 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 many draws. And Bar they probably would have deserved something against Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona uh, dug deep and got that win. And you thought at that at a point that we still have a title race on. Uh, come the past weekend. I mean, Real Sociedad uh, bet this was, what from what I didn't see it, I decided Friday. Even if Milan was playing, I'm not watching because my daughter wanted to have a family movie evening and we did that and it actually was good because it, it's calm my nerves. We had actually some uh, fun there. So, but I hear this was an entertaining nil-nil draw. Um, I did not see much of that. I mean, uh, um, Granada Levante, this was basically the one where Granada could have saved themselves. Nope. Levante 4-1. Villarreal now, you know, after beating Bayern 2-1 over Getafe, uh, maybe get something going in, in the league. And Espanyol um, get a rather, rather unlucky uh, loss uh, at the Wanda Metropolitano. Again, through a very, 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 very late penal penalty. I mean, um, Atleti took the lead through Carrasco. Uh, then Raul de Tomas in the 74th gets an equalizer. And then a penalty that, yeah, hmm, 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 potentially maybe, da, 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 um, 2 1 with 10 men only. Carrasco scores the penalty. Um, I think um, it was from, from what I hear, it was more. The penalty was given because of the body language of the player, more or less, because it was not very, very um, clear who. Uh, that it was actually a handball, but you know, Carrasco converting that, that one being the hero, Atletico Madrid, after those, this heroic performance against Man Manchester City back to winning uh, ways. Celta beat Atletico Club 2 0, big one, and then uh, the match of the week, Sevilla against Real Madrid. Uh, where Sevilla played really, really, really well, but this was a game that was more marked by dodgy refereeing than anything else. Rakitic free kick, 
I mean, how Ada Militar is jumping out, out of the wall because the free kick was not a good one. It went straight through the wall like a shoulder height of the jumping players. Not a good goal. And then Eric Lamella makes it 2 to 2 nil. And then the big one, Kamavinga already on a yellow card takes a big foul, uh, takes a foul that should have been a, um, a second yellow card, but the referee is not giving the foul, although it was a pretty clear one. And it seemed like the referee didn't want to send anyone off. And from there, it was only down. I think uh, probably could have given another penalty for Sevilla at that point. Um, however, Sevilla in their typical fashion, and I keep calling Sevilla the most frustrating team in Europe, because you see the potential there. You see that they are actually a pretty good team. They just cannot piece it together, except for the Europa League run that we had two years, years ago. But other than that, I have to say Sevilla are just awful at, and, and, and the game was really like the season. Great start. It all looked very convincing, but when it counts, they're falling off. Rodrigo in the 50th gives Real Madrid the lifeline. Then another one that was uh, very, very uh, contentious. Uh, Vinicius Jr. scores the equalizer in the 76th. But then the referee gives a handball. And uh, the, the fun uh, part of that whole thing was that um, not only did the replay, while the referee is, is looking at the VAR, is shown on the big screen, you also see uh, the goalie, um, goalie Kurt, 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 well, discussing with the fans whether it's a handball or whether, whether it's not a hand, hand, handball. In kind of a friendly discussion, which I thought was really, really, really interesting. The referee, I don't know what he saw. I think he was dead set on having the right call, although it was the wrong call. And the goal is called off. However, Nacho Fernandez gives Real Madrid the equalizer. And then Benzema, who else finds the win in 90 seconds? And if you watch that goal, you'll see like all the Sevilla defenders are kind of going to uh, cover the goal line. Whereas the, was the, little, the midfielders are leaving ample space. And in that line, Karim Benzema with miles of space seemingly around him can take down the ball and pull it in the internet and Real Madrid get a win that puts them more or less to a title contention if they would have lost that game it may have been the other way around but now it can only be Real Madrid at the point the only thing I want to add that while I think I slightly do understand why Real Madrid were playing in turquoise the white against the turquoise was not a great color match in many ways and then yesterday, Barcelona uh, with the flattest of performances. Of course, I mean, there is still everyone annoyed that so many Frankfurt fans were in Barcelona. And what was happening there, I say it again to me, it just speaks volumes, absolutely volumes of how um, the socios that have the tickets are giving them away and don't really care and that everything is being bought with credit cards from Spain. Speaks to the inventiveness of Frankfurt fans, but that this can happen. Speaks of how uh, it's all about money and you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's an Easter weekend. We don't care about the Europa League and the Frankfurt fans care about the Europa League. So uh, it just speaks about the state of the fan base uh, in Barcelona. And yes, uh, they have banned the ultras because, you know, there were some unsavory characters, but it would actually be helpful to have those back again to get a little bit of atmosphere in this uh, great stage in this great state I, I will always remember always when i was in Bar 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 barcelona we were standing i think it was against leeds united when they won 4-4-4-4-0 four, 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 four in the first game of the group stage and we were like low behind the left goal we had tickets and next to me was sitting like this grandma who was so much in love with Shimao, but that is the end where actually the hardcore fans should be saying, Shimao, Shimao, Shimao. And it's kind of so, yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> it was very cute of her and I, I actually found a big liking to her and she actually uh, likewise. But I was thinking, this is the, the, this should be the hardcore end of the Barca fans. I should not even be uh, able to get tickets there. So take, take all this. Flat performance for Barcelona. Cadiz scores a goal uh, through Perez, where, uh, you know, first uh, they're saying is a little bit hesitant and he makes two saves, but because he was hesitant, he's already in a bad position. Perez can do that. So, and Cadiz get a really huge win uh, in the relegation fight because now, if we look at the standings, as I said, uh, up we already said everything. I just want to mention, but let, 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 let's look at uh, relegation. Cadiz actually moving out of the zone and now we have Cadiz Granada Mallorca really really close together and Granada being now the awesome favorite 
to go down. Which for a team that has been in Europa League last, last, last season, uh, that's a big fall, I gotta say. I mean, Granada are never a very solid team, a uh, solid La, La Liga team, but uh, the expectations were definitely going the other way. Uh, but I would say Getafe, even Rayo, I think could very well be implicated there. They are not quite safe yet because Rayo has a pretty tough program coming up. But uh, realistically, uh, Granada, Mallorca, uh, Cardiff uh, are the ones that are fighting for against re 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 relegation. With Levante maybe having teeniest of chances if they can get, get it going. But you see, 10 draws, 5 wins. If there are few, if two more wins, you would have four more points and you would be right in the thick of it. So uh, Levante also looking not bad. But um, looking upward, we see now it's actually becoming a true top four fight. I would say Barca will probably win against Rayo. Uh, that will have come, 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 come up because they really don't, 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 don't want to disgrace themselves any further. But if you look now, um, it's 60, 60, 60. Potentially 63 for Barca, 57 for Betis and 55 for Real Sociedad. There is a chance for the Champions League, even if Real is not quite yet out of it. So a uh, really, really interesting uh, race there. And I don't know what will happen in Sevilla if Betis will overtake um, Sevilla themselves. So uh, that is one to look out for, for sure. Many movements in the middle, but you know, Maybe a rather unconsequential uh, uh, that one. Um, as for the upcoming round, we have a big mid big midweek games. Um, as I say, Via Real against Valencia is this classic. You know, Derby de la Comunidad is already today lay, lay, laid on. Uh, I probably have the, as a Milan Derby at the same time, and then there is uh, uh, Liverpool United at the same same time. But you know. If you love Spanish soccer, that, that's what to look forward to. I think Real Madrid with a win over Osasuna is more or less within Epsilon, uh, regardless of what happens. I actually want to see what Levante can do against Sevilla. Atletico Madrid, Granada, Granada fighting for the lives. And of course, uh, the big one, Barcelona against Real Sociedad. Uh, Real Sociedad could really get themselves very much into the Champions League conversation again. So that might be interesting um as i said on the weekend barcelona have the makeup games why don't we have a weekend round because we have the cup final where i now here it is 10 o'clock here i still have it nine o'clock so uh i think it's not quite yet uh, decided but valencia against real betis should be an interesting game betis uh i think betis would deserve the title on the other side they should have been thrown out of the competition because of you know the civil derby that kind of went a little bit ugly yeah, but you know, I think Betis are definitely a deserving side by just the uh, uh, type of football they play, whereas Valencia is a little bit more on the tough side, tough and rough side. So, just my few thoughts on that one. In any case, I really would like to know what you thought about the happenings in these two leagues uh, over the past two two weeks. Um, you know, let me know about the Cup 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 final, or if you think that Barcelona still has any chance. I think they have none. Uh, and yeah, uh, Jen, Jen, about the refereeing decisions for Real Madrid. Uh, yeah, I forgot that even the ref at the end could have probably given a penalty for Sevilla. Was not his day in any way. In any case, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.